I think Partridge Ireland 2000 is a good way for me to, to to view myself as an artist, give myself that distance and allow me to, to just be myself. I think life is kind of like complicated enough that I can just be myself and not have put myself into a public space or social media. I think using this alter ego is really beneficial for that. I guess like a like a protection somehow, you know. The work I make now is like a culmination of say the last 10 years of of working as an artist or just, just slightly over 10 years including studies and I didn't realize it at the time but it's all kind of come together in this moment in my practice be it like the concepts and the ideas I'm working with how I work the materials and the choices I make it was somehow also hidden to me and only kind of like upon the like the first time I exhibited the work, it, it I became aware, of, which is like, is really interesting and in how like the best things happen in in the work. I studied printmaking, and then I moved into sculpture, working more with wood, making like large sculptures from wood, and then from there I moved into performance art. And funnily, the performance art was very much about like making work bigger than white cubes, bigger than myself, trying to break free of white cube galleries and really like move into the street and kind of directly affect people or make people notice. After that, I, m I moved back to printmaking, back working with wood and trying to work on larger scale, make images that are <laughs> bigger than myself. Mm. Here's the fun part. <laughs> and I, I just wanted to go bigger and I kept on trying to go bigger and eventually I, I I got limited by the size of the screen printing press and uh, the screens. So I just needed more space. Yes, yeah, scale is always problematic because everything becomes more expensive. Inks, paints, uh, paper, storing the work, uh, posting. Uh, everything. Framing. For a while I was working from my studio or my flat at home, but that also didn't have enough space to, for the scale I wanted to work. So I was looking for a place to work and I found, I was lucky to find Turbo Factory. So I'm reusing or reimagining uh, Christian imagery, taking paintings from the likes of Caravaggio or Rubens or Hugo van der Goss or Gentileschi, taking these images and reworking them and see what, uh, what, what they can say to us now in a contemporary sense and also what they can say to me. go to any European art history museum like the Gemälde Gallery in Berlin it's just full of religious art and that's so uh, I don't know that's kind of what I like looking at you know yeah 
Yeah, I would say Ireland is like an overarching team uh, through my work. I was born in Ireland and raised Catholic. There's a long history in Ireland of the Catholic Church and a lot of it quite negative. I wouldn't consider myself a practicing Catholic, but I'm interested in the stereotypes that have been given to us by Christian imagery or by like sayings or, yeah, so just kind of like interrogating that. But on another more straightforward level, I just really like the, the images, like the figures, the robes, the colors. To be away from from Ireland was important for me to to understand myself and to understand the the work I wanted to make and yeah without the pressures of of Ireland. I think maybe my frustrations with uh, with society in Ireland and uh, yeah maybe the, like the lack of actually the, what I see is like a lack of society or the con the consideration people have for. For society, and I think that's what I like about Germany and Berlin. That people acknowledge their responsibility to to society, and the social contract is 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 clear here. I think that maybe in a way it's not clear in Ireland, or as I view it, a concern over over Ireland politically and Irish identity and how it's used, and I would say this influences every part of my work. That's why the, the the pseudonym or the alter ego is useful for me as the artistic construct because I can carry I, I can carry the weight of those ideas that in a way frees up my image making t to be less restricted with these issues. The physicality of the materials then is really important and the physicality of the work because it allows me to to just work and that's when that's when I, I kind of get the greatest understanding of it. And I moved to Berlin around six years ago. Berlin is, is kind of home now. It's hard to... Yeah, Berlin is home. So it's hard to... I think once you leave a place, it's kind of hard to find the right moment to go back, you know? I think My favourite stage is working with the wood. The translating of the image from the painting uh, first of all, like sketching it onto the board and having fun with manipulating the fingers or the toes or making the image my own. And in the cutting, while you have to be quite concentrated, it's, it's also quite fun. And I think maybe the, the colours is one of the harder parts for me as I, don't, I haven't worked that much with colour in the past. So I really have to focus and, and be ready for that. And then, like I said, the process of printing is really physical and tiring so I have to make sure I'm I'm ready to go but and then when you see the image of course it's it's worth it then that is the I guess the most energizing part normally I can do a large print in in about a week maybe just 10 days from start to finish the physicality to work and coming from a farming background and and also working with the wood and working with your hands and working with material, real materials is something that really gives me a lot of pleasure, a really important part. I normally keep the mask for social media. Sometimes I do a little bit of street art stuff and I kind of get helps for kind of this as well, you know. Um, and I really like to do the street art because I think it, it brings in a lot of energy into my practice, you know, which is kind of important for me. I use weed pasting technique, a street art technique to paste the prints onto the street. It started during COVID when all the galleries were closed and there was not so many opportunities. And then I started just doing street art then to yeah, just to keep making work. And I found the process just incredible just to bring energy into my practice. <laughs> it feels absolutely ridiculous to take a week and and then paste it up on the street for something like, like it's pretty ephemeral. It can be gone in days. 
I think it's really hard to pinpoint the exact moment like an idea originates. It took me about a year and a half, nearly two years, trying to make it work and scale it up to that scale, and then it wouldn't work. Funnily, the first ones I made were was in Ireland. Actually, I went back to my mother's place, and she's got some big sheds. And I organized the stuff there, and it didn't actually work. There was the first one I, I, I had the huge scale, but the images, I didn't quite get the right quality of the print. But I knew that's when I knew it would work. Um, and then I went back to Berlin. Actually, while I was in the studio making the work for the first six months, any visitor or anyone that was into the studio were very interested in it. And then I exhibited it for the first time in Berlin. And yeah, people were really very positive feedback and people were really interested, which was, which was interesting, I guess, and uh, flattering. And then since, suddenly applications are easier and open calls and uh, yeah it seems to get much more positive response i think it clicked because the work clicked like it's i don't think my application skills have gotten better <laughs> it's my work has gotten better <laughs> Do you have to be like an outtake reel just 20 minutes of me grunting Okay. We got the classic skin color. <laughs> yeah, always an easy one to do. The choice of color is funny. Going back to my performance work, I used I used to use these colors in my performance work. This kind of the skin tone, this bright pink skin tone, or this kind of like kind of cartoonish element, has always been present in my drawing, say practice, along with like a kind of the humor, I guess, of these colors is kind of important. I actually wanted to put that. There is the, the simplification that happens in my process, but I think the sheer energy that's poured into it and uh, the rawness of the raw materials are like wood and paint and in paper and in my physicality and that adds an emotional heft I think that is kind of maybe already exists in the existing image and then gets layered on, you know, which I think yeah, is really it's weird that I can like simplify the image but still keep this spirit or emotional kind of energy in it is, it's not something I quite understand, but I don't think I need to understand it either. For me, I've always worked with the body or the or the human figure and that's what's always in all my art practice it's always driven it and so when I go to galleries and museums I love to look at how figures are rendered the fingers the hands the expressions so that's really what draws me to these religious images and the expressions that are captured and the folds of fabric falling over someone's arm or leg Especially with hands or or feet, I always try to to um, twist them or or like push them to the limits of what can still be understood as a hand or a foot. Like keep adding digits, see how many digits I can add till it stops looking like a, a hand, you know, and see what I can kind of get away with. Yeah, the color just suddenly makes them actually look like the object that they are, you know. Which is one of the nicer parts.
Oh, please. I think these feet are my favorite part, or the potential to be my favorite part of the image so far. I think this, this like weird angle in them is nice. Possibly. Every print I make has, has some kind of like inevitable imperfection in it, you know, just because they're so huge. Try and see how Jesus is doing. Or, yeah, fuck it, why not? Fuck it, why not? Putting yourself in uncomfortable situations is really important, I think, creatively. I think that's the biggest, the most important thing, I think, to push your boundaries and push yourself into, creatively into uncomfortable situations. And I think then that's where you'll find the most progress, you know, or the most um, growth in your, in your work, I think. can be something as simple as joining a new print workshop and feeling socially awkward and oh, I have to go and talk to these people and oh maybe I'm not a good enough printmaker maybe I can't do this it's okay I think you know but that is still uncomfortable and always questioning what it is to be an artist it's like one of the biggest questions for me what it is to be an artist how to make images how to what is original Like the image works, you know, and the, like the first one is always a bit like disheartening because it's like the colors aren't quite right or it's not powerful enough, you know. So it's like standard, but no, it's it's perfect. Nice, nice, nice. Um, actually, these these feel not super happy with that one, but like the, I need to make his 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 fabric. He's cloth darker. Bring that up because it's just empty space in the middle. Um, and this, even though this yellow guy is actually not as bad, I think actually if I just change his, I'm just going to change his hood. I think he'll be fine. Do you mate, like this texture that I'm getting in the wood here? It's too, too, like some of this stuff here is actually just like, that's really nice. living with an idea for a while and seeing what happens with it, you know, and see where it goes, be that in, in your practice or in any kind of situation, you know, okay. and challenge them and see what they can give you. Because I think that's like, to be an artist is this thing that you bring around. So it, it has to be, be somehow beneficial to you too at some stage, you know. Yeah, try and find the benefit. And if that is like playing with ideas, like that's one of the benefits then is to, I get to like play with ideas. I don't have to decide whether they're good or bad. That's... That can be someone else's job, you know. I think like 
to look after your your mind is really important as an artist you know it's your main tool um something i wish i'd had when i was younger like the idea of an artist being this kind of uh genius figure isn't helpful you know and i think it's more important to look after yourself be easy on yourself do a lot of exercise and yeah look after your mind because that's your your tool and yeah be easy on yourself you know I can't complain about being an artist, you know, it's kind of, it's given me everything, you know, like, gives me my reason, so it's not really something I would complain about. I actually think like it would have been fine if I didn't do that brown at the bottom. Would have actually like it wouldn't still have been like perfect, but I think this brown just makes it really mm -hmm. pulls it down a bit too much. Yeah, it just didn't need it, you know. Like I might maybe add like I could add like grass or something green at the bottom maybe, but it just makes it really these kind of colors just all kind of get a bit muddled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me say it's not about the, it's just part of the process. 
Arctic Ireland, the Red Thousand, is my daddest ready-made. An alter ego inspired by artists Brian O'Doherty and Marcel Duchamp. An artistic construct that allows me to use my identity as an ongoing work of art. It represents my hopes for an inclusive Ireland that moves into the future, looking outwards, unburdened by conservative values and nationalism. Irish artist Brian O'Doherty first used the pseudonym Patrick Ireland as a means of protest against British Army presence in Northern Ireland. In 2008, 10 years after the Good Friday Agreement, he buried that idea in a grave on the grounds of the Irish Museum of Modern Art. I have resurrected the idea with the addition of Dreithausend, a German oddity of adding the digits to signify something futuristic. In the early 20th century, O'Doherty's friend Duchamp used ready meds to elevate mass-produced objects to the status of art, questioning the role of an artist as a skilled creator of original objects. I wanted to try it with an idea rather than an object, and where better to take something of cultural value than the Irish Museum of Modern Art? Taking a prefabricated idea and reuse it to question my role as an artist and what it is to be original. <laughs>